Hey guys, Joe with Carmel Car Audio, and if you've clicked this video, you're probably dealing with a current draw. And today I'm going to show you how to do it, and where to begin, and what tools you'll need. So let's get to it. Alright, so first things first, number one tool you're going to need is a multimeter. If you don't have one of these, you can go buy one at, you know, I'm pretty sure you can buy one at Home Depot or Lowe's, but Menards, or even... Um, your local tool store. Harbor Freight is one of the places that we have here in town. You can buy one of these. You do not need to go buy yourself an $800 snap-on multimeter. For me, I like it. I use it. It has a really cool feature for Bluetooth and the Bluetooth feature really does help doing this current draw test. You want a multimeter that can do current draw. When I turn this to the A, that tells me I'm on current draw test. I have my negative on my common and I have my positive on my amperes here. I'm not having it on you know, normal voltage testing, I'm testing for current draw. And to make it a little bit easier on yourself when you're doing this, get yourself some alligator clips. Man, these things cost like eight bucks for a whole pack of weeds. So the alligator clips are gonna come in handy holding it on one side of the wire and then holding this on the positive terminal on the battery. This makes life 10 times easier. Do not let them touch like so when you're doing a current draw test or touch ground because you will 100% pop a fuse that's inside your multimeter. Make sure it's fused. On top of that, you're gonna want something to pull the fuses. Most cars come with fuse pullers or you can use a needle nose plier with some grooved tips to help grab the fuse and pull it out. The other one is just a drill or a ratchet or a wrench or something of the fact to get that nut off the battery terminal. For me, I just use my drill on a 10 mil or 12 or 11 or whatever the size socket it is. So get yourself your tools that you need to take off the battery. And as we continue, there's there gonna be more tools in this that are specific to your vehicle. Some cars you have to take apart. That's kind of up to you to do your research. But as far as fundamental tools here that we need for this job, everything I showed you, and then you grab yourself a piece of scrap wire about eight gauge or four gauge something like that this is you can find at any hardware store or o'reilly's or anything like that or if you're in this sort of thing and you do car audio or mobile electronics i'm sure you have some kind of scrap wire hanging around but this piece right here is one of the last tools that you will need for this job and i'll show you why here in a second now let's get to the car if we can get this to open uh, this is one of the issues why we're testing current draw because it's not working. It's got two batteries on this specific car here. The Mercedes has a main battery back here and then a battery up front for starting the vehicle. But we're more worried about this battery because this battery has been dying after a couple days of sitting. So we're going to take it off and just see what it's resting at. There we go. I heard it pop. So when you do this, you pretty much want everything off on the car. You don't want dome lights on. You don't want the ignition on. You don't. You want nothing on. And if you have a door open, it's gonna tell the BCM that, hey, door's open, dome lights on. That's gonna pull current. And it's gonna give you a false current draw. So what I do is I make sure all the doors are shut. The trunk, I don't know if it says on the dash if it's open or not. No. It does not, so I'm not worried about this. When you have a door open on your car, whether it's a front door, driver door, passenger door, it'll say on the dash, door open, or bonnet open, or trunk open. If it says something like that, you wanna fake the computer into thinking that it's shut. Luckily, on this dash, it doesn't think that the trunk's open, so I don't have to worry about it telling the BCM and telling lights to kick on because the trunk's open. On certain cars, you need to make it think that it's shut. Most cars that you're gonna be testing with have a battery under the hood and fuse box panels inside the car. To do this, you're gonna to wanna to grab a flathead. This is one more tool you're gonna to wanna to need, flathead. So you're gonna to wanna to open up the door and find your fuse box locations. This car specifically has a fuse box back here behind this seat. We're gonna take the little door jam here and pretend that the door is shut. Don't shut this as is because it will not shut and you're gonna wind up jamming this piece and possibly breaking it. Don't do that. You wanna close this and now the computer thinks the door is shut 
or if you have a Toyota, you have some kind of pressure switch here on the door. Do this, wait a couple seconds, dome light should shut off. If it doesn't shut off, look around the jam for a push pin. And if it has a push pin, you're gonna wanna find some kind of way to clamp it down to think that the door is shut so you have access to the fuse panel, but not telling the computer that the door's open, dome light's on, and having that current draw and giving you false information. So once you get all that done, come back here to the battery. I've got Caleb here to help me. I've got my multimeter. I've got the battery. I've already loosened the nut on there to pull the terminal off. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set this. You have to hold the function button on this specific multimeter, turn it to amperes. Once I hear that beep, it tells me that the battery's not gonna just randomly shut off on me. I'm gonna turn Bluetooth on and Whenever I get to my phone, I'll turn on the app and I'll connect the, the unit. That way we can see it lifetime. What I want to do from here is why I have him. Go ahead and hold that. My man. Disconnect your positive terminal. Grab your leads. One lead to the positive terminal of the battery. And one lead to the positive lead that hooks up to that terminal. Now here's why we have this scrap piece of wire. I'm going to have him jump the terminal off the positive of the battery to the positive of the terminal that connects to that side. This way, not all the current is going through my multimeter. Some cars, you can do this without doing the jumper wire, but it's safer to do it with a jumper wire. We're gonna go inside. We're gonna turn ignition on, wait for things to power on, make sure everything's turning on in the car just a little bit. You don't have to go through and turn everything else on. Just leave the key on for about 10 to 15 seconds. Now that we do that, turn ignition off, Pull the key out, shut whatever door you don't need open. I don't need this one open. I need that one open and you fake it being shut like I showed you earlier. Go ahead and disconnect that jumper wire. Okay. The reason I did that is because sometimes whenever you turn your ignition on, when I disconnect the battery terminal, I disconnected power to everything, including relays. When I do this, it's as if I never disconnected the terminal from the battery and those relays still have power. So if we have a open relay that's being stuck open, I didn't lose power and I didn't shut that relay down. And now I can test true amperage out of everything. Not just fuses. But relays as well. If you don't do it this way, you're kind of missing the point of testing some of the relays that could be stuck open. Because as soon as you remove the terminal and you remove power from all the circuits, you're deactivating those relays that are stuck open. This helps test and do a thorough test and keeps everything open as if the battery was connected all the time. So here in about 10 to 15 minutes, once this has gone to sleep, we're gonna come back, we're gonna look at the current that it's pulling. Once it goes to sleep, it should be between 0 0.02 and 0 0.08. That is the recommendation of current draw on any battery. If it's higher than that, you got an issue. So here in about 10 minutes, come back. Once it's asleep, we'll see if we have an issue. So for you, it's gonna be a split second. All right, guys, and we're back. It's actually been about an hour. Been distracted, having to go up front, take care of other people, but I'm glad I have let it sit for this long because some cars take 10, 15 minutes. Some cars take an hour to go to sleep. This one has been fluctuating between 0.12 and about 0.16. We've got a tenth of an amp of current being drawn through this battery. That's definitely gonna kill this battery over time. We need to figure out where it's coming from and I'm about to show you. First off, let's start back here. We're gonna pay attention to this meter. As I pull fuses, I want them to go down, not up. If you pull a fuse and you plug it back in, it goes up, that means you just took something out of the BCM style and it woke it back up once you plugged it back in. Give it 10, 15, 20 seconds or so. Let it drop back down to your range of where it's resting and then continue pulling fuses. As I pull this one, it drops down to 0.11. Plug it back in, it's 0.12. So we got 0.01 of draw on that. I'm not worried. I wanna get a fuse that drops it down to 0.08 or below. Let's see if this relay is doing anything Bruh. not a single thing changed on that so this relay is doing absolutely nothing right now it's good 
So let's get into the cabin. And this is why I like this little multimeter because the multimeter is in the trunk and my phone is right here with me and yet I can still see everything. That did nothing. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I find something that drops it to the optimal operating range of current draw. Also, make sure when you're pulling these fuses, you know which hole they came out of. You don't accidentally put it back in the wrong spot and you're like, oh, hey, you know, something's not working on my car anymore. As I'm pulling all of these, I'm not getting any kind of change, which is good. That means there's no current coming through these right now. But I want to find the one that dropped it. Point zero not even point zero one of current so I'm not really worried about that alright guys so now that I'm done pulling all the fuses I've pulled all the relays uh, everything in this car that I've pulled and this has not changed one bit so I decided to go back through hook the battery back up disconnect it do that thing and then just let it sit. It's been roughly about an hour and a half. Some vehicles take longer to fall asleep than others. On this one here, we're resting at 0 0.0835, which is the range that we want to be in. Some vehicles like Chrysler, even in the owner's manual, it says, hey, I've got a high resting amperage draw. If it's going to sit more than two weeks, disconnect it because it will kill the battery. So it's not uncommon for certain vehicles to have a current draw that's slightly higher than the 0.08, probably 0 0.09 or 0 0.01, or not 0 0.01, 1.0. Still a little high, but check your owner's manual because some of those will pull more current than others, more than the optimal range of 0.02 to 0.08. For other cars like your Chevy, your Ford, Dodge, stuff like this that are not as complex as a Mercedes or a BMW or a Volkswagen. You're not gonna have a whole lot of CAN bus or computers in here like this car. This car has a ton of computers in this car. So for your car, going through those steps and pulling each fuse, you'll find, hey, it dropped down from 1.2, 1.7, down to 0 0.02 or 0 0.08 between that range and when you do that what you need to do next is look oh okay so this fuse is fuse number 27 and this relays to the radio or this relays to the factory amp or this uh, ac control or whatever it may be when you find that fuse and it drops to the optimal amperage range you now know my culprit is this fuse because it powers this unit i need to change the unit some fuses have more than one unit on it it could be a radio a cigarette outlet ac controls and interior lights so you have four units off of one fuse if that's your case you need to go even further and find those units in the car and start unplugging one by one until it reaches this optimal range so to sum things up this car is perfectly fine it's just taking a long time to go to sleep the issue that they're having with the the knocking when they turn the car on or anything like that that's just something to do with the blend door actuator from underneath the dash because when you turn the ignition on turn the ignition on it gives a little clunk 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 until it turns off i went ahead and unplugged that just to make sure and sure enough that's exactly what's going on in this car. As far as this car having any kind of current draw, it's within optimal range of what this car has. Check the owner manual, see that it's in that range, and there's nothing more I can physically do besides basically make a disconnect for the battery if they're gonna park it more than two, three weeks at a time, which this is for a dealer, so it wouldn't surprise me if this was sitting more than two, three weeks at a time and not being turned on, because it's Mercedes and they're hella expensive. <laughs> For you guys at home, that's the basic understanding of how to do a current draw test. If you pull all the fuses and you have no drop in current, or you pull one of the BCM fuses and it drops down to zero amps, I mean 0.00. .00. You plug it back in, it jumps up to two amps, 
and then over time it goes back to your resting current draw and you pulled every other fuse but the only fuse that makes a difference is the bcm then at that point you have a bcm issue also if you have anything aftermarket plugged into your car like let's say you did a radio did a remote start did whatever i'm not saying those are your culprits but it's easiest to disconnect those first at the beginning of doing this test that way you can rule out anything aftermarket and then you still have the current draw start doing the fuses start doing the relay and one more tip if you've done all of that also check your alternator you come up to the alternator sometimes i've seen bad alternators and they have a bad zener diode inside it's break and now it's pulling current instead of blocking current from being pulled and that is a common issue that i see on a lot of vehicles where nothing else in the car is bad but the alternator is actually pulling current when it shouldn't this is a good fundamental step on diagnosing and figuring out where that current draw is coming from and as you can see now i'm still seeing this thing slowly slowly drop it's at 0 0.08 and now it, right before he came over it was at 0 0.075 so this computer is still taking some time to sleep and it honestly might just be a computer issue inside of this vehicle considering i pulled every fuse i pulled every relay and i've pulled the alternator off and i left the bcm fuse intact so the bcm stays connected and the fact that it's still fluctuating tells me that there might be an issue with the bcm just not shutting off certain areas of the car whenever the car's armed so other than that that's pretty much all i got for you i'm going to stick around and put this together I don't think you want to watch that because it's, well, I hope that this has helped you narrow down how to find the issue in your car and figure out where to attack the vehicle next to figure out your issue. Have a wonderful day. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more things to come and more helpful tips, DIY, all that stuff. And if you guys have any questions at all, feel free. I'm sure I've missed something. Mention it down below. I'll make sure to comment and help you out the best I can. There are so many ways to do this, but this is the way I like to do it. And then it just works for me. But make sure to subscribe, stay up to date as we got tons more videos coming out. And if you have questions, comment down below. But other than that, have a wonderful day because I'm not going to with a Mercedes.